Hello everyone and welcome back. So today I thought would be a good day to talk about my personal Hashimoto's story. It, it's been a journey, it's a continuing journey. Um, my story is really never going to end because I'm going to have this disease for the rest of my life. I'm going to just basically tell you the whole story up until now. There are definitely some parts that I want to go into more detail in and will probably be in future videos because they're different topics. But today, here's my story. So I was diagnosed with Hashimoto's in mid-August of 2017. Now before I was diagnosed, I was working the whole summer of 2017. Um, I was working at a production company and I was doing a lot of editing work, um, going on shoots and helping out as a PA, um, lots of different jobs. And for the most part, I worked in their editing room, which was a, you know, small office space um, with sound protection, foam, and computers, no windows, just, you know, kind of my own space. And I would go in there and put on my headphones and work. Now, it was about the end of June, beginning of July, uh, I started to not feel great at work. And it came on a little slowly and it, the symptoms were masked enough where I didn't really think they were anything and I would usually blame them on outside factors. So for example, I was getting such bad joint pain in my fingers, like right in my knuckles. And I was working on a computer all day and you know, I would type and it would just hurt and I would click my mouse and it would just hurt and I just blamed it on the air conditioning. Even though it was 90 degrees outside, I mean, the inside was, you know, cool. And I would just say, oh, I'll just start bringing a jacket to work and, you know, see if that helps. And then it kind of moved to my knees and my knees would hurt sitting at my desk. And so I would, you know, stack up some stuff to rest my legs on so they would be, you know, out straight instead of bent and I'd rub them a lot. I'd drive and my knees would hurt. Just tons of things would happen. And I just thought it was from the cold or I was sitting for too long. And then, you know, I started getting headaches every single day, which was really unlike me. I'm not really someone who got a lot of headaches. And I would always say, oh, I didn't sleep well enough. I didn't drink enough water, um, which might've been contributing to it. But I mean, I wasn't doing anything differently than I was doing before. It just all of a sudden I was getting a headache every single day and I would have to go home for lunch and take Excedrin or, you know, ibuprofen every single day, which is insane and not good for me. And then probably the scariest thing that happened was I was getting all these weird cognitive issues. So. I would start talking to someone and halfway through my sentence I would forget what I was saying and I just kind of need to play it off like oh I'm sleepy I you know I didn't sleep well enough I'm not drinking enough water eh. something but that's when I knew something was really wrong I would feel just fuzzy the whole day not myself at all just Everything was kind of in a daze. I was just kind of going through the motions. Didn't really have a sense of humor. I just kind of felt like a zombie. It was really hard for me to get through my sentences. I felt like my tongue was swollen. I felt like I couldn't remember anything and my memory was shot, which was really unlike me because I've always had a really sharp memory. And yeah, I just felt like I was getting lost in my own mind a little bit. So, I decided to do the worst thing you could possibly do and Google my symptoms. So I went on WebMD's symptom tracker, which was help very helpful, but um, the first thing 
that came up for when I put all my symptoms in was chemical exposure or mold exposure, inhalation of mold, that kind of deal. And I, you know, just thought, oh, okay, that makes sense, you know. The room I work in at work is, you know, doesn't have any windows, doesn't have great insulation. Maybe there's mold in there, you know. I didn't know how old the building was or anything, but I kind of jumped on that explanation because it was convenient and easy. And it didn't mean anything was wrong with me because I didn't really think there was anything wrong with me. So I asked my coworker who also had an autoimmune disease, I said, hey, but you know, I didn't put two and two together yet. I just asked her, I said, hey, when you go in, the, in this room, do you notice anything? Do you start to feel weird? And you know, she said like, oh, maybe, but you know, not anything out of the ordinary. And the other person that worked in there a lot was fine, you know? So I was just like, oh, okay, maybe it's just me. I don't know. I'm just gonna get it checked out. So I made an appointment to see a doctor and I went in and I explained my symptoms to her and I said, you know, here's what's going on with me. I'm pretty sure it's this. And she said, okay, well, let's make sure you do an x-ray of your lungs and get some blood samples for us to test. And she said, I'm definitely gonna test for, you know, a mold panel, mold exposure, check for mold, but I'm also just gonna test for a few other things. And I said, all right, sure, do whatever you need to do. So I did all the tests. The first one that came back was the x-ray of my lungs and the radiologist said, everything's clear, there's nothing wrong with your lungs, like no mold. I'm sorry for the jackhammer. The windows are all closed, but that's gonna be annoying, so I'm sorry. <laughs> Moving on. Then the blood test took a little bit longer to get back. I think the blood test came back a few days after the x-ray did. And I just remember looking at the app, because I got my, you know, test results on an app on my phone. I remember looking at the app and just seeing all these, you know, red marks by these certain, you know, things. And I didn't know what any of it meant, you know. I just, you know, saw these red tick marks. And I think there were four of them or something. And one of them was for antibodies. One of them was for TSH. One of them was for T3 and one of them was for T4. And I didn't know what any of that meant. And so I just kind of Googled like, what is T4? What is TSH? And it was like thyroid stimulating hormone. You know, T3 and T4 were two thyroid hormones and T antibodies were thyroid antibodies. And you know, it didn't take that long to put it together and just Google, you know, T antibodies over 1400, what does that mean? And it said Hashimoto's thyroiditis. At that point, I really didn't want to self-diagnose myself again because it went so well last time, but I was pretty sure that I had Hashimoto's. I did my research um, in the meantime before going back to the doctor. Um, I just Googled like, how do you cure it? How do you manage it? How do you, you know, what do you need to do? You know, I learned pretty quickly that you live with it for the rest of your life, but the symptoms can be managed and you need to do a different diet. You need to eliminate some things from your diet and you can take this synthetic thyroid hormone. That's pretty much all I knew going into the next doctor's appointment. I think the same day, I got my lab results back, I immediately cut out gluten because I, I read that that's like poison for everyone with Hashimoto, so I'm like, all right, we're done. So I went to, back to my doctor, and she explained the disease to me, pretty much what I had already learned, and I asked her, I was like, okay, so what do I need to do as far as symptom management and getting better? She's like, well, you'll take this, you know, thyroid medication, this synthetic thyroid, and hopefully your thyroid levels will go back to normal. And I said, okay, well, what about my symptoms and do I need to change my diet or anything? And she said, nope. 
which I knew was incorrect. Um, you know, I already figured that out and I just went, hmm, okay. And she said, to be fair, I'm not an endocrinologist and I would definitely go see one because they'll know more about it. And I said, all right, fine. So I went home and my parents were super helpful and found me a holistic endocrinologist that lived near me. And I've been seeing her ever since. And I went into her office for my first appointment with her. And, you know, one of the first things she said, she's like, okay, well you cut out dairy, soy, and gluten, right? And I said, yes. And, you know, that was a really good sign that she knew how to manage my disease, not just through medication, but through diet and lifestyle. And that was really important to me because I knew that just taking a pill wasn't gonna fix everything. It, would, it might help, you know, balance my hormones, but I was still living with an autoimmune disease that was going to give me a lot of pain and my symptoms weren't going to go away just because my levels were back to normal. It would help, but you know. So I had to make a lot of changes to my diet. I was vegan at the time, which will be a, a whole other video um, of the journey of that. You know, I really, really had to change my diet and I needed to accept the fact that my life was going to be different. It was really, really difficult um, going from the person I was pre-diagnosis, you know, going through that much change. And luckily, you know, I'm better now, but it is hard to go from being someone who's very energetic, very active, you know, doing high intensity interval training almost every day, just super active, really on it, super organized, very ambitious, just going from that person to just feeling like a zombie. And I had, you know, two week periods where I could not get out of bed because I was so fatigued and I was in so much pain and thinking and having conversations were so difficult physically like I could not get through it and I still have my problems sometimes you know you guys will probably hear me stumble over my words or forget what I'm saying mid-sentence it still happens you know because I'm not better yet luckily now a lot has changed I've made a lot of changes to my lifestyle and you know kind of come to terms with everything and I'm starting to feel like my old self again you know, it's slowly coming, and it might take years, but it's coming. And I think that's something that was really important to keep telling myself, because it's very easy to get in your own head. And I did it a lot. I, you know, on my bad days, I was like, this is how I'm going to be for the rest of my life. And I just, I'm never gonna have friends again, and I'm never gonna be able to meet anyone new again, and that's fine. All my friends are gonna think, you know, I'm a jerk because of my mood swings and I'm treating them so poorly. I just got in my own head a lot. And the majority of the friends and family that I have are so understanding. Luckily I was living with my best friends that were very understanding of my mood swings, my crying, it's kind of something I'm known for understanding that I couldn't go out all the time, but I still wanted to feel included. I know it sounds insane, but you know, yeah, I probably can't go to the bars tonight, but I just want to be asked, even though you know I'm gonna say no, you know, they got that and that was really, that was really great to have. So, you know, I'm still a work in progress. I'm always gonna be a work in progress but I feel so much better now. And there's still so much I have to say. Um, I'm probably gonna make other videos on this topic. I have a lot of, you know, mini stories within this story about, you know, my diet and my friends and being a college student, managing this disease. So much happened. And another curveball got thrown when I got another diagnosis of something else too, so. Be ready for that.
But thank you for listening to my story today. I really hope this helped you. If you're someone who has Hashimoto's or another hormone disease or any autoimmune disease, you know how difficult the change is. And maybe you just got diagnosed and you're looking for guidance. And I really hope this helped you. Just one piece of advice that I want everyone to take away is doctors are brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. I could never do it. But some doctors aren't always right with everything they're gonna tell you, you know? You have lived with your body your whole life. You know when something's wrong. You know when you have a reaction to something. You know when something isn't right. You need to trust yourself and, you know, get help from a doctor, of course. But in my case, if a doctor tells you you don't need to change your diet. Maybe do your own research, look into holistic approaches, look into people that have had the disease and what they did to fix it. Don't just take everything at face value. But you, need, you it will take time, and you do need to kind of manage your, you know, witch's brew of what you're gonna do for your body and your medications and your food and everything. It's a process. But trust your instincts, trust yourself. Listen to other people's stories, listen to what they did, listen to what helped them. You know, everyone is different. And the way that I, you know, managed my Hashimoto's could be very different from another person. Everyone's different. But I felt like it was important to say that before concluding today. So thank you so much for listening. If you like this video, please make sure you give it a like down below. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. I hope you guys have a great day today and I'll see you next time.